Back with Bob. I'm sorry. Back with Brian or BG and JJ Radio. Bobby is off for today. Thank God. Oh, yes. Um, we have Mr. Sean Lee of Truck and Tomatoes. Kind of disrupting the industry a little bit. Truck and Tomatoes is a really cool concept. We've been talking about it here a little bit. So, first of all, Sean, thanks for hanging out with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So, what is Truck and Tomatoes? What are y'all doing? And what's on the horizon here? Yeah, so we uh, specialize in sourcing food from local farmers and ranchers, and uh, we serve restaurants in San Antonio and Austin, and kind of everywhere in between. Awesome. So you, so you, you're you're doing the whole farmers market for the restaurants, so they don't have to go right. out there and be picking the the produce and and getting the stuff directly from right. the farmers. You're actually going out to the farms and yeah. finding the best quality ingredients. Right. And then you're putting it, I'm assuming, in a refrigerated truck. Right. And then you're bringing it to the restaurant so yeah. that they can say Don't that they're scratched. You're giving away secrets. You're giving away secrets. I'm just yeah. thinking, this is, this is brilliant. I'm mad that I didn't yeah. think about this yeah. about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's there's a movement in, of interest for people to source food local, for chefs in particular. And Talk kinda, about that. Why do you think that's happening? Well, I think it's happening because people started to get, like, there's this idea of you're getting a vegetable that's coming from sometimes another country sure. or the other side of the country. And yeah. I think just from a common sense uh, way of thinking about it, it seems a little off. Like, right. why would I get a cucumber from California right. if we can grow a cucumber in the hill country? And yeah. and so it's we we believe that it's not a fad. It's just because it makes sense. Sure. The chefs want to source local, so you're not artificially ripening food. It, it's mm -hmm. fresher. You can tell a story of where it comes from. So people are connected with right. the food of their own region where they grew up. It's kind of an old world model. It's like because Europe, it, it's it, pretty normal, right? Yeah, 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 and it's the way we used to be. Right. Yeah. Italy, you're in Tuscany. You're eating beef. If you're you know north, south, right, it, you're going to be eating different stuff. Right. Here, we just. I remember my grandma used to freak out because we're from Brownsville, right? So she she saw papaya in December. She's like, no, this is yeah. not right. Right, yeah. Papaya shouldn't be at HEB in December. It's right. crazy. Yeah. Okay? Right, yeah. yeah. But I, never, I guess never thought about that. But you feel that this movement's here to stay? Yeah, we think so. Um, I mean, it's already on the coast. And so and right. in Austin, which is the other market we deliver to, it's firmly there. Right. Yeah, so for San Antonio, it's kind of on the way. It's getting started. We're always a little, little brother. Yeah. yeah, but the cool thing about San Antonio is when stuff comes, it seems to stay. For sure. Though it's not like it's going to come and leave. But we believe when it's it's coming now, and the, and the Pearl's been a huge part of that. You know, there's 20-plus restaurants there now, and turning out culinary school graduates who right. who all are very interested in where their food comes from. Yeah, from the CIA. And so, yeah. especially in the Pearl, and they actually, on all of their menus, they kind of say where every right. single ingredient's from. They'll right. say, like, um, I don't know. I, I've read it, but I'm probably I'm tipsy when I read it. But yeah. it says... <laughs> Strawberries from Poteen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you exactly. for bailing me out, Brian. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. exactly what they say. So so that's kind of the new trend you feel. Yeah, we think so. Um, I, I mean, there's there's so many chefs that are, are starting to shift their thinking. It used to be when you create a menu, it was about, you know, here's what I want, and I'm going to go find the ingredients to match it. And now there's a shift in thinking to say, here's what's available. Sure. I'm going to yeah. figure out how to put a menu together with the food of our region. Makes sense. And so, yeah, so we, we you know, we, we believe we've got the best food available in Texas, but we're also selling uh, the ability for the chefs to tell a story of where the food comes from. And how does this help the farmer? Well, it's, it's great for the farmer because we work with a lot of small and medium-sized farmers right. who uh, aren't big enough to sell the HEB or Whole Foods uh, or somebody that size. Right. And so we come in and we say, well, hey, we'll buy 50 or 100 pounds of that uh, you know, purple top turnips that you have right now. Right. Mm. And, and it helps them because they might have like a little extra they can't bring to the market, right. and we fill a lot of gaps for them. So we, we, we think we're doing a great service for the farmers. So, Sean, how'd you get into this? Well, my background is in community organizing, so I have a totally different background. Uh, my wife and I moved here to open Haven for Hope mm -hmm. and uh, wow. did that for a long time. I was the chief operating officer there and uh, then went to get my MBA and kind of this whole entrepreneurial uh, bug bug got me. <laughs> and, and we did a um, kind of a mock exercise to start a business. Mm -hmm. And uh, the business was a little different uh, four years ago when we, or five years ago when we came up with the idea. Uh, but I was kind of crazy enough to quit my job and, and go pursue it. So sure. I've always loved food and I've always loved health. And uh, for me, it was just kind of figuring out the business that, that kind of matched those passions together. I'm imagining like an old truck with like the wooden boards on the side. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that it's... Uh, well, it's, that, it's, that's it's, how we started. Like was it how you that's started? That's how we started. So we started cool. as a mobile farmer's market on, on wheels, farmer's market on wheels. And we had a 30-foot trailer and we had old reclaimed barn wood on the side of it. Did you... Really, you didn't see it? Uh, I was 
Oh, just, hearing you talk, yeah. looked at your shirt. So, I just pictured him on a farm yeah, road yeah. that I'd never want to go on. And, yeah. and thanks for doing it here, because so many people have that idea, and then they'll go to Austin or they'll go to those markets where they think yeah. it's going to be successful. You did it here, and now one of your markets is Austin, and right. that's super cool. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It, it, it's definitely been harder to start here, mm-hmm. but um, but we flipped it on. Yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just kidding. It, it's. It's going great now. So let's talk about this. Uh, I hate to say Costco type of thing, but you're the, you're you're now uh, shifting gears a little bit. Let's talk about that. You you're going to yeah. now allow um, people to come and have a membership to to purchase these kind of goods now. Right. Yeah. So we're calling it the uh, local food shopping club, uh, and essentially it's just opening up our warehouse in the afternoon, Monday through Friday, and allowing the public to come in and buy the same food that the chefs are getting. Right. And so it's it's kind of cool. So it's like you go to your favorite restaurant, whether it's you know Supper at Hotel Emma or Cured or Gwendolyn downtown, and you can know that when you come by the food, it's the same food that they're featuring on their sure. menus. So yeah. it, it's a, you have to pre-order. It's a pretty simple. We're doing a pretty low tech. We just send out an email. Right. You just reply this is what we with, got with what you want, yeah. and uh, we have it ready for you, and we just oh, walk cool. it right out to your car. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Eat that curbside. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Eat that curbside. It's, it's our version of curbside. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, we're not doing Fresh any fancy version. apps right now or anything like that. But we're just using email exchange. And sure. uh, and then we're doing a Saturday market as well. Where's the, where, where is this at? Well, first of all, where yeah. can they go and pick up the food? Uh, they can well. They, they can learn more about how they pick up the food by emailing us at uh, shoplocal at truckintomato.com. And then they'll, we'll kind of tell them how they would order and pick up the food. When they do pick up the food, it's at 10511 Wetmore. <laughs> Sorry, we just moved this new warehouse. And uh, that's our address. It's pretty much right at Wetmore and Broadway. And Saturday, we're doing a market uh, starting in November um, or December. And we will be running that every Saturday uh, where you can come and check it out. You can buy from there. And then if you want to become a member, you can sign up and access the food every every uh, day after that. All right, yeah. thanks, Sean. So this is Truckin', that's no G, truckintomato.com. Yeah. Right. And you can also email them at shoplocal at truckintomato.com. And th- again, on Saturdays, check them out at 10511 Wetmore. We're going to take a quick break. Be right back with Bobby and JJ Radio.